everybody. Happy Thursday. Dr. Boyce Clark, founder of Libricity Labs. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about cooler weather, static electricity, and what it does to your hair. So before I got into cosmetics and beauty products, as many of you know, uh, my background is in geochemistry, but I worked in a, a specific type of chemistry uh, known as hydrogeophysics. And that was where we would use geophysical techniques to image the earth and find uh, water bodies, permafrost, contaminants in water, things like this. Uh, really cool stuff. It's a, a branch of geophysics known as geoelectrical techniques. So the, the technique that I specialized in was resistivity. So uh, we have a little bit of that today because uh, it, it's, it's one of my favorite subjects uh, scientifically. So what's the deal with static electricity and relative humidity? Uh, why does it, when it gets colder out, that we start having static flyaways in our hair? Our hair gets drier, we feel like our hair might be falling out more uh, aggressively or more frequently. Let's talk about what's happening with that. So first of all, just kind of, you know, static electricity and then relative humidity, the amount of moisture in the air. So when we talk about objects being charged and having uh, an electrical charge to them and that charge transferring back and forth, uh, many of you are probably familiar with resistance. That's an electrical property. That's a property of the electricity. But when you look at the property of the object through which the electricity is traveling, that's known as resistivity. So whereas uh, ohms are the unit of resistance, ohm meters are the units of resistivity. Very cool stuff. Uh, charge relaxation time, that's how fast a charge jumps from one molecule to another or one soil grain to another or one object to another. So I've kind of drawn um, my attempt at a red and a, a blue balloon here to show that these objects, all objects in the atmosphere, have charges to them. So we've got some positive and negative charges kind of all around it. These things vary over the surface. Um, I've drawn some, drawn some water molecules here. So these are H2O, right? So as chemists, we generally will write this as HOH because of the way the hydrogens are on either side of the oxygen. But so when there's humidity in the air, enough of it, these charges between these two objects are uh, the air is conductive, so the charges are balanced there. The charge will travel through the humidity in the air, so we don't have a buildup of, of static electricity. So in summer months, or probably for most of the time in Louisiana, we have enough humidity in the air that static electricity isn't a problem. So these electrons, these negatively charged ones, are actually traveling through these water molecules, these HOHs, and going and grabbing a positive charge and being neutralized. So when we get into drier months, there's less humidity in the air. So the problem with that is we lose this conductive medium in the air. And now these objects don't have a way to balance or neutralize their charges. So part of the objects will want to be attracted, part will want to be repelled, but main, mainly these electrons, those negative ones, want to go over to the other one. So uh, that's when you get a static charge. If you know rubbing your feet on the carpet, you're building that energy up, and you go to touch your friend, and it jumps over to them and shocks them. So if that is not happening, and you're just kind of building up energy in your body, it's going to your hair because the hair is interacting. It's small and thin, and it's interacting with the atmosphere. And you get a lot of effects from that. Here's a list of some of them. Um, Number one is when the relative humidity goes down, our hair and scalp gets drier. So we've talked a bit about moisture and uh, is moisture a myth uh, in your hair? The moisture that we at the Bristol refer to in your hair is what's naturally being placed in the hair shaft as your hair is formed in the follicle and it's growing out. We always want to balance that. We don't want excess moisture coming in. That's why we make your hair hydrophobic with our products to prevent moisture from the atmosphere from going into your hair. Uh, you know, you dive into the swimming pool, you don't want that water being absorbed into your hair. We want to keep the balance of moisture and lipids, so the natural oils that are in the hair shaft, at a perfect balance of what they were when your hair was being formed and coming out of the scalp. So in, just like in the summer here in Louisiana or in places that are humid, when there's excess moisture in the air, it wants to partition into your hair. Well, when there's less moisture in the air than there is in your hair, the moisture will leave your hair and, and go into the atmosphere, and that leaves your hair dry. It also will dehydrate those lipids. So that's when you get dry hair, um, itchy scalp, 
some, uh, much easier to damage when you don't have the elasticity and flexibility that the moisture is providing. Another one is uh, dullness in the hair. When you have static electricity in your hair, those cuticles have a charge to them. And with static electricity in your hair, the cuticles will tend to raise up. So now that is actually exacerbating the problem because as the hair strands move side by side, they're generating more static electricity that's lifting the cuticle. And if you think about that as thousands of little mirrors on each hair strand and when light strikes your hair and bounces off and hits the eye of the observer it's bouncing in all different directions so the observer is perceiving your hair as being dull whereas if the hair is the cuticle is flat and smooth like a smooth mirror or a smooth piece of glass more of the light that's coming from the lights or the sun or whatever are reflected back in what we call coherent scattering and we see more light so we perceive the hair as being shiny we see more ranges of the color spectrum so locking the cuticle down and having a flat cuticle makes your hair appear shinier it causes it to glide smoothly or lubriciously against the hair next to it so that we don't generate the static electricity uh, the dreaded split ends these happen as hair ages it can be exacerbated by aggressive chemical treatments over use of heat when you style but it's basically the delamination of the tips of the hair so the structural components are being damaged and it's just not being able to hold that uh, cylindrical structure anymore it begins to delaminate or to peel open well this is an ideal spot for static electricity electricity to wreak havoc right because it can make this side of the split end repel this side so basically you get the the split end just opening up and being its worst possible appearance. Also, you have hairs that are trying to repel each other and you start to get the, uh, the fro going on with it. So that's a nightmare. The, the static flyaways is the, is the fro where you get the tiny little hairs that are just going everywhere. Um, you also get a stressed scalp. If you have dry hair and a dry scalp, that makes unhealthy hair follicle that can stress your hair. Uh, there's a study that, or, or, let me rephrase that. There's a, uh, a myth out there that during the winter months you lose more hair or you lose it more frequently, more aggressively. There's a study done two years ago by the International Journal of Dermatology that looked into this and while having a stressed scalp from dry hair, dry scalp and dry conditions does contribute to hair loss, they found that the major factor contributing to hair loss in winter months is putting caps on and taking them off or putting caps on that fit too tightly and pull traction against your follicle causing something called traction alopecia. Uh, the taking on and off of the caps are braids and uh, causes damage to the follicle and that's a tremendous source of hair loss. So it's, it's not necessarily related to cold weather but it's certainly related to uh, something that we do in cold weather. So what can you do about this in the sun, in the winter when you have um, dry, dry air outside, uh, dry hair and dry scalp is condition. So I know a lot of you that have fine hair feel like you shouldn't condition because you don't want to weigh your hair down. Using a conditioner that's got some oils in it that are appropriate that are not going to just put layer upon layer on your hair or what you need to do to balance that natural moisture and the natural lipid content of your hair. As I've talked before, the lubricity system is designed where the shampoo is something that washes away and takes off any buildup that's, that the conditioner may place. It's a very thin molecular film that we place with the conditioner, but then it's removed every time you shampoo and then you replace it back every time that you apply the conditioner. And that's why this is, a, is a, a system that's designed to be used together. So, you know, hydrate, use a conditioner, and don't wear tight tight-fitting caps and be very gentle when you're taking them on and off. If you have any more questions about this or you want to talk about hydrogeophysics or electrical resistivity, uh, chargeability and resistivity, please uh, send us some questions or post them on here. I think we have a question. Libby asks, what if you have a buildup of conditioner? So Libby wants to know, what if you have a buildup of conditioner? So generally that's going to occur when you use conditioners that have maybe a large amount of silicones in them or a large amount of oils or what we call cationic polymers. These are all kind of the classic things that are in conditioners because your, the cuticle of your hair has a negative charge. So conditioners in general are things that have a positive charge so that they can bind to that, neutralize that charge so that smoke and dirt doesn't get 
attracted and bound to it. But the problem with these type of compounds is they will tend to build up over time. When I design the lubricity system, I specifically use a compound in our shampoo called Cetrimonium Chloride, or CTAC for short. CTAC is a conditioning agent, but it's incredibly effective at stripping silicones and cationic polymers off of your hair. So we do use a very small amount of silicones in our conditioner and cationic polymers, but every time you shampoo with the Q shampoo, that CTAC is stripping that off and removing it. And then when you condition afterwards, you're putting a literally molecular level of film back on. This film forming is a good thing. A very thick layer is not a good thing. So by doing that every time, you're having a fresh layer of this every time. So that's why I urge the people, use the conditioner and the shampoo together as the system. If you have any more questions, feel free to post them on here and we'll absolutely respond to you. Or you can email us at customerlove at Thanks guys, have a great weekend. I'll talk to you again next week.